Hello, this is Matt Leonard for The Foundry, and in this video we're going to be looking at assigning 3D survey points to the new camera tracker in Nuke 8. Now the way this works is you create user tracks, and they can be assigned to known 3D survey points. That can either be survey data, such as a LiDAR scan, or something like a 3D model, if you have that of the location. This then tells the camera tracker which points in your 2D footage go with their counterparts on your 3D model, allowing it to solve the camera to match the known 3D point and achieve the best result. Now if you don't have a 3D model that corresponds to your 2D scene, you could create one using Nuke's Model Builder. Also it's worth noting that 3D survey points have replaced the projection solver workflow that we've had in previous versions of Nuke, but you can still get to that if you want by typing X in the node graph and just entering projection solver as a TCL command. So this is the footage we're going to be looking at in this video. You can see it has a very slight camera move and for this example we're going to be looking at working out where a single frame of this was and then projecting that back onto some geometry of this building that we have available to us. Now the building was actually modelled using Model Builder and if I jump into it you can see this is what it looks like. Reasonably straightforward and simple to put together using the Model Builder system. You may also have some point cloud data such as a LiDAR scan or something like that. And you can see in this example I have just that. This is the side of the building with a little bit of the front here. But if you had a full LiDAR scan you obviously would probably have more data available to you than I've got here. For this example we're going to be using the model to help us work out where the camera was. So let's go back to our footage and first off add a camera tracker. So I'm going to do this by pressing tab and beginning to type camera tracker. Obviously you could get to it also from the 3D menu and down to camera tracker. You could also right click your mouse and choose it from the menu here. Or in fact you could press and hold the space bar down which also gets you the same menu that you would get if you press the right mouse button. We're going to go with the one that we have here and we're going to move across to user tracks. Now here we want to define a user track specifically based on what we can see in our model. So if I view my model, you can see if we zoom in, this is kind of the area that we have, this kind of side view. So down here on the left hand side, that looks very similar obviously to the left hand side of the building here. So we don't have this main kind of front part with the pillars, but that's going to be fine. We're going to track based on the building here. Now what we can see clearly is we've got some really nice points. We've got some information here at the top of the roof and then also these nice bars running round of brickwork. So we've probably got at least six points we could use. One here at the top, one here, one here and then also at the end of the building as well. So we're going to use those six points and those points as user data need to be tracked over three frames. So I'm going to go ahead and do one and I'll pause the video while I do the others. So as we've seen in other videos relating into user tracks, we can come up to our add user tracks feature here and click. And then I can just click wherever I feel I want to add one of those tracks. So I'm going to click here at the top. And then in this window, I can move around until I'm happy with where it is. Now at the moment, my frame runs from 1 to 150. And I need to track this over at least 3 or 4 frames. So I'm going to do it every 10 frames. The easiest way is to use this here, where I can specify I want 10 frames and then use the arrows to move up and down the timeline in 10 frame intervals. So I'm going to move to frame 11, and I'm going to move this back, I'm going to move up to frame obviously 21 and again move it back. So that gives me three keyframes and I always like to do four just to be on the safe side. So now you can see we basically have this matching over four frames. Now it's important as I said that you have three or four keyframes for this to work and you want to get this as accurate as possible. I'm now going to go ahead and add another five of these user tracks. Also I'm going to label this so this is going to be called top front. Also I'm going to have a middle front and a bottom front and then this point I'm going to call top back, middle back and bottom back. So I'm going to pause the video while I do those other five user tracks. Okay, now they're all done, what we're going to now do is correspond our 2D position in our image 
to a position in 3D space based off of either our survey points, point clouds, or obviously our model. So we're going to obviously use the model that we have. So I'm going to come across, zoom into my model. I'm going to make sure that my model is set to display wireframe, just so it makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. I'm just going to navigate around. And I want to focus in on this top part here. So somewhere there should be fine. I'm going to move it to the side. Now when we open up our camera tracker again, we're going to select our top front position, come across to our select vertex, right click, user tracks, snap to vertex. I'm then going to come down to my next point, which is going to be just in here, making sure first I move across to here, click, right click, user tracks and snap. You can see this says that it is the mid one. And then finally down to this one here, right click, user tracks and snap to bottom. So now you can see that we have top, middle and front. So next we want to come around to the back side of the model. And we zoom, make sure we're not in the camera clipping plane area. And let's select this top point. Select our top point here, right click and assign. And you can say this is top back. Let's just move down to our next point. And that's going to be here. So I'm going to click on here, select our mid back right click, select, and you can see that says mid back. And then finally move across to my bottom, select that vertex, right click and snap. So now these need to be checked just to make absolutely sure we've got what we need because sometimes we can end up with slightly different things than we expect. So we've got top front, mid front, bottom front, top back, middle back, and bottom back and they all look like they are set correctly based on our labels. So then I select everything. I do an update XYZ just to make sure that it recalculates everything correctly. Cross to our camera tracker. Let's move my viewer back and then do solve. You can see we have a solve error of 1.27 and that's not bad at all for the fact that we're on HD plates. So let's now come across to our Scene Plus and Create. Let's move on down with our viewer to the bottom and connect that into the Scanline Renderer. So now you can see our points on our building are looking great. If I tab across to my 3D view, I can then see that and my camera should now be in the correct position for projecting from one of these angles back onto the geometry. So let's just say we're going to do it from the first frame. And you can see we've got some camera movement there. And if we chose to track or auto track all the way through, we'd obviously have a full camera movement based on that. But we just want to do a projection on one frame, which is why we worked our project this way. So I'm going to take my 3D model. I'm just going to bring it down. I'm going to add a projection 3D node. I'm also going to take my image and I'm just going to from here add a posted stamp and bring this over here. And this is going to come in here. This is going to come down onto uh, here. And my camera, I'm just going to copy and paste a version of that over here just to keep it neat and tidy. So I want to obviously set a frame, so I'm going to say frame hold, and I'm going to set my frame hold to frame one. Again, let's just give ourselves a little bit more space here. And then if I view that, making sure again that this is back on, not wireframe, but textured. We should now see that we have our projection through our camera. And if we were to look through my camera, you can see 
closing down these first and switching off our vertex selection that we now have a really nice lineup on our building. Okay, so we've set that and we've got this great projection based off of frame one. Okay, so that is looking at using survey data to either capture one frame for projection, which is what we've looked at in this project, or we could use it to do an entire camera match move. So this has been Matt Leonard for The Foundry.